بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أنبياء الله جميعا وعلى سيدهم وخاتمهم حبيب إله العالمين أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين الذين أذهب الله عنهم الرقص وظهرهم تطهيرا أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ومن الناس من يشري نفسه ابتغاء مرضات الله والله رؤوف بالعباد صدق الله العلي العظيم In these three nights, last night, tonight and tomorrow, we're going to discuss some aspects of the life of the commander of the faithfuls, our leader, our Imam, Al Imam Amir al Mu'mineen, Ali Yubna Abi Talib Ali Salat Wasalam. And this title, Amir al Mu'mineen, has been given by the Prophet only to Imam Ali. An exclusive title. Only Imam Ali among the companions of the Prophet is the one who had been given this title to him by the Prophet. My friends, sacrifice has different steps and kinds and levels. Some people sacrifice their time. Others sacrifice their money, their wealth. Another group may sacrifice his or her expertise, knowledge. Sometimes someone sacrifices his or her comfort. Sometimes a person sacrifices his honor, his dignity and honor. They tell him, this person listens only to you. So we want you to use your honor, your dignity to push this thing to happen, to mediate between two people. This is sacrificing one's honor. But the Holy Quran says the highest level of sacrifice is when you give your soul, when you give your life, when you give your blood for a sacred cause. And therefore Imam Ali alayhi salam was the true embodiment of selflessness, of sac true sacrifice, of true devotion and earnestness and ikhlas, what we call it in Islam, ikhlas. The Holy Quran in Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 207, chapter 2, Allah records the highest act of sacrifice one can provide for others. And that is when Imam Ali alayhi salam decided voluntarily to stay, to sleep in the bed of the Prophet when the Prophet had to leave that night under very dangerous circumstances, leaves the city of Mecca because enemies were surrounding his house. Forty tribes, they decided there was a coalition of 40 tribes of Quraysh, pagans and idol worshippers, who decided to put an end to the life of the Prophet. Because the Prophet was left defenseless. His main defender, Abu Talib, alayhi salam, the father of Imam Ali, died. A few weeks later, Khadija died. Abu Talib died in the month of Rajab. Khadija died in the month of Ramadan, on the 10th of Ramadan, between them only a few weeks. The Prophet declared that year as the year of sadness and grief, Amul Huz. And he was left 
defenseless. Nobody would defend him against the aggression of Quraysh. Quraysh took advantage of this. They decided to kill the Prophet. They said, we will do three things to him. Either we stop him from preaching his business that he calls Islam, we will put him under pressure, or we murder him, or the least thing we can do to him is to ex expel him, يخرجوك, إخراج, to expel him out of Mecca. So they plotted to murder the Prophet. The Prophet knew Allah sent him a message. Imam Ali also knew, he said, Ya Rasulullah, I will stay in your bed. So you can leave peacefully. And he spent the night where he knew that he is going to be killed. Because Quraysh surrounded the house of the Prophet. It was under siege. But Allah saved the Prophet, saved him through a miracle. The Prophet left his house, he took a handful of pebbles and he threw it in their face. They became blinded for a few minutes. Quraysh became blinded, they could not see the Prophet leaving the house. Imam Ali was in his bed. Allah records this incident in the Holy Quran. Allah eternalizes and celebrates this incident of sacrifice by a man who was only 21 years old, young man. But he said, I will give my life to protect Islam, not just to protect my cousin Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but I want to do a service for Islam, to protect Islam. So Allah says in verse 207, in Surah Al-Baqarah, وَمِنَ nas Among the people. This is the way God gives example. He always uses وَمِنَ nas Among the people. وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَشْرِي نَفْسَهُ Yashri is, is selling. When you sell something. Yashri. Yashri nafsahu. Yashtari to buy. Yashri to sell. Yashri nafsahu. He gives his nafs, his soul, his life. وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَشْرِي نَفْسَهُ ابْتِغَاءَ ابْتِغَاءَ مَرْضَاتِ اللَّهِ Allah knows that Imam Ali is devout and dedicated and sincere. He has a class. He was not looking for titles. He was not looking for any sort of praise by anyone. So God knows about the soul. The only one who knows about the soul, what we think, the heart, is God. We don't know about each other. We don't know about each other's intentions. Sometimes we say, I can read his mind. But not always correct. You might, you might read his mind wrongly. You might interpret someone wrongly. The only one who knows about the intentions, inner intentions, and the heart, and what we conceal in our minds, is Allah. يَعْلَمُ خَائِلَةَ الْأَعْيُمْ وَمَا تُخْفِي الصُّدُورِ What we conceal in the heart is known for Him, for God. So Allah says Imam Ali did what he did. He exposed himself to danger, to murder, to be killed, defending the Prophet and defending Islam. He did it for one thing, seeking God's satisfaction. Rib Allah. That's the ultimate goal of every devout worshiper. This should be our goal in life. Some of us, we seek the satisfaction of our boss. Some of us, we seek the satisfaction of our wives, the husbands the children. But the ultimate satisfaction should go for God. When we satisfy God, this, is, this should be our goal. When we satisfy God, we can serve the humanity. We can be good. Because we dedicate our intention not for 
human beings, but for the Lord of the human beings, for the Lord of the universe. Ittiqa'a marfatillah. Wallahu ra'ufun bil ibad. And thus God becomes compassion with his servants. So this is one incident. Imam Ali teaches us that we have to fight a disease. This is a mental disease. This is a social disease which is rampant in the communities, in the societies, among people. And that disease is called self-centeredness. Self-centeredness. Hubbun nafs. When we only love ourselves, when we only put ourselves above others, that's a disease. This is an abnormality. We have to cure this. What is the medicine? Who is the psychotherapist, psychologist? Where is it? This is the Holy Quran. What season? When? The month of Ramadan. The month of Ramadan, through fasting, we have to fight egoism. We have to fight selfishness. To put ourselves before others, that's a disease. It would render all our deeds useless when you only consider yourself to be important and the most important thing. And you don't have any consideration for others. This is a disease. Such a person is going to have a problem in the family with his family members, with his wife, with her husband, with his children, with his neighbors, with his partners at work, with people outside, with people inside. This is a mental disease. Self-centeredness. Imam Ali is an example. Imam Ali says, I am important, but there are things more important than me. God is more important than me. Humanity is more important than me. I'm an individual. People are more important than me. I'm a member of a community. I should be a soldier defending the community. We should always put successful, successful communities successful countries are the ones that they put people before individuals. Whenever people are before individuals, that country moves forward very fast. But in certain countries, they put an individual before people. The individual is more important. One individual is more important than 40 million, 50 million, 60 million, 100 million people. They don't care about people. His Highness, His Majesty is more important. This is how it works. Countries that go backward day by day, they put individuals above the general interest of the country. Imam Ali says, no, this is wrong. Imam Ali is, when I say Imam Ali, I mean the Prophet because Imam Ali is the servant of the Prophet, the student of the Prophet. Everything Imam Ali learned, every single thing, comes from Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Imam Ali says, you have to fight this self-centeredness. Fight it. Aqbil ala nafs His jewels, look at what he says. He says, Aqbil ala nafsi Beautiful. Serve your nafs, your soul, by turning away from it. By crushing your bad desires. When you crush your bad desires, you nurture yourself. You make it stronger. You polish yourself. You refine it. You make it powerful. But if we supposed to listen to our desires, Every single desire we listen to it and we obey. We become the weakest, weaker than some, some animals. God says in the Holy Quran that some human beings are weaker than some animals. 
Some animals, when they eat, they are full, they don't pick up the food anymore. They leave it. But some human being, they eat, they are full, but they still plunder people's food, people's wealth, people's clothing, people's land. They don't get full. Why? Because his nafs is weak. That person has not nurtured his nafs. Aqbil ala nafs. Serve your nafs by turning away from it, not listening to it every time it tells you to do something. Say to yourself, I am free. Yes, and God has created me free. And because I am free, I should not do everything. Some children, they say, I'm free, I can do anything and everything. This is wrong. Because you are free, you should not do everything. You should control yourself. Certain things, you should not cross them. You should say to this, not your father, not your teacher, not the policeman, not the judge. You should be the judge over yourself. You should say to yourself, I'm not going to do this. This is a red line. Even if I, the story of yesterday, the Sudanese student who received the news that you made whatever million euros in your account, he went to the bank manager after three times telling him, this is not my money. This does not belong to me. Although he needed money. He needed money. But he drew a red line for himself. He would not cross it. If the money does not belong to me, I'm, I'm not going to touch it. I'm not going to, under whatever circumstances, I'm not going to touch. Such a person becomes a hero. Such a person becomes a leader. Such a person, God says about him in the Holy Quran, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَشْرِي نَفْسَهُ ابْتِغَاءَ مَرْضَاتِ اللَّهِ وَاللَّهُ رَأُوفٌ بِالْعِبَادِ The difference of Ali ibn Abi Talib with others is not in the size, neither in the color. If you would see Ali ibn Abi Talib in the middle of a crowd, you would never distinguish him from others. Same color, same size, but his nafs was different. The nafs that he carried here was completely different. His nafs was high. His nafs was sublime. Sublime and powerful because he nurtured his nafs. This is a process of nurture. We don't learn it in one night. This is why every year we have a month of Ramadan. We need this 30 days of fasting, of devotion, of intense prayers, of intense repentance, istighfar. We need it every year because we forget. We soon forget. Two days after Ramadan, we forget everything. So we have to remind ourselves. Therefore, the Prophet, you remember what the Prophet وسلم, said. When the people came back from a military excursion, jihad, he dispatched them outside Medina to defend the boundaries of Medina. They came back from that trip exhausted. Some of them were wounded. Some of them were murdered. The Prophet received them and he said, لَقَدْ عُدْتُمْ الْآنَ عُدْتُمْ مِنَ الْجِهَادِ الْأَصْغَرِ وَبَقِيَ عَلَيْكُمُ الْجِهَادُ الْأَكْبَرِ You just came back from the minor jihad. They said, Ya Rasulullah, minor jihad? We gave some casualties. Many members of us were murdered. We are wounded. And he called it small jihad, minor? He said, yes. They said, then what is the grand jihad, al-jihad al-akbar? He said, al-jihad al-akbar, jihad al-nafs. Self-control. This is real jihad. When you are able to make yourself a true human being. True human being. That's the message of Islam. To make us true human being. Jihad al-akbar. When we are able to reach that stage where we say to the sins, things that are sins and haram, we say no to them. No. No. I'm not going to do that. This is haram. This is illegal. I'm going to corrupt myself if I do this. This is al-jihad al And that's the goal of the month of Ramadan. The du'as that we read during the nights of Qadr, 
the Quran that we read, the supplication, the tahajjud, all ends in one point. They trickle down to one point to make us able to resist. Power of resistance. To nurture the power of muqawma, resistance. To resist sins. Imam Ali was hero. In this department, he was hero. In the department of earnestness, in the department of fighting his ego, crushing his ego. Therefore, Imam Ali left nothing for himself. Everything he did, everything he did was for the sake of God, not for self-promotion. He did not work for himself. And Allah says, when you work for me, I work for you. If you do everything for me, I'll do everything for you. And look at Imam Ali. Where is Imam Ali today? Why people love Imam Ali? Why people are attached to him? I hear from many scholars who told me once, one of them told me that we are not attached to our leaders the way you guys are attached to Ahlul Bayt, to Imam Ali. It's amazing the way you are attached to them. You celebrate their martyrdom, you celebrate their births, you remember them, you praise them, you, you name your kids after them. I said, yes, of course. This is, this is Al-Mawadda. This is exactly what God says in the Holy Quran. قُلْ لَا أَسْأَلُكُمْ عَلَيْهِ أَجْرًا إِلَّا الْمَوَدَّةَ فِي الْقُرْبَةِ We praise them, we are attached to them. Because we could not find a substitute. We could not find a substitute. Ali is unique. In the history of mankind, Ali is unique. I was reading the other day, Jean-Jacques Rousseau, the French philosopher. This is what he says. I was reading a quotation. He says, I could not find in the history of mankind a man who deserves the title of being a mentor, a mentor or a teacher other than Ali ibn Abi Talib. This is a Christian French philosopher. He could not find someone to be called a teacher, a mentor, a source of inspiration other than Ali ibn Abi Talib. Ali left nothing for himself. This is why he used to work discreetly. So he sleeps in the bed of the Prophet to defend the Prophet so the Prophet can live peacefully. He gives his life. He owns nothing but a ring, simple ring. And someone who's in need, he comes inside the mosque and he turns and he asks people one by one for some help. They had nothing to give him except Imam Ali. He gives him his ring. Again, what is the worth of the ring, my friends? It wasn't more than if they sell it in the market at that day, it would not have been more than five dollars a ring. Five dollars. But Allah records this incident in the Holy Quran in chapter 5, verse 55. إنما وليكم الله ورسوله والذين آمنوا الذين يقيمون الصلاة ويؤتون الزكاة وهم راكعون. While he's bowing, he pays the zakat. While he's praying, he pays the zakat, he's, he pays charity. It's recorded in the Quran. Because again, it was done with ikhlas, with devotion. Ali did not wait for any recognition. We people, we love to be praised, recognized, acknowledged. This is our nature. If we get, if we get upset, if people do not acknowledge us, we get upset. They ruin our, our day. Imam Ali was different. Imam Ali says, I seek God's acknowledgement, not people's acknowledgement. Yes, we have to seek acknowledgement, but from God, not from people. People's acknowledgement, people's praise, people's appreciation expires. Expires. But God, when God acknowledges someone, does not expire. Another time, they gave food. Five members in a family, they fast and they are about to break their fast in the evening. 
after sunset with only five loaves of bread. Each one has only one loaf of bread. Only. Nothing with it. And then someone knocks on the door. This is a test from God. Test. And God records this again in the Quran. What is the price? What is the value of five loaves of bread on that day? Nothing. Everyone can afford that. But because they give it for two reasons. They give it without telling anyone. Even, even the Prophet who was a next door neighbor. He did not know until God told him. God told him about this incident. Father, I did not want to her father to tell him, Hey, daddy, today I went hungry, huh? I want to tell you. Nobody told him. Hassan and Hussein didn't tell their grandfather. God told him. So this is number one. It was with devotion. It was in secrecy. Seeking, For only for the sake of God, not for the sake of publicity. Sometimes we give to orphans, to poor, for the sake of publicity. Not all people, of course. God knows the intentions. But Ahlul Bayt, when they gave, there was no publicity. We wait for no reward, no appreciation, nor an appreciation. And they gave it when they were really hungry. Very hungry for three days, my friends. You can't go with no food for one day. But you can't go with no food for three days. This is starvation. They were at the brink of starvation. They put their life in danger to give their food. Yatiman, miskinan, wa yatiman, wa asiman. Miskin is destitute, Yatim is an orphan, Asir is a prisoner of war who has no accommodation, no shelter, no, no food in the city of Medina. This is another example that sometimes we suffer for the sake of others. It is worth it. It is worth it to cut back on your food to give it to others. It is worth it to cut back on your clothing on your money, on your gas, on your shelter, on your accommodation, to give it to others. Give to others. You have received these from God. Give it to the, the creatures of God. You will receive many fold. So Imam Ali is, is the embodiment, the example of selflessness, tafhiyah, and sacrifice. And without sacrifice, my friends, without sacrifice, we cannot excel, we cannot move forward. If a person decides, I'm not for sacrifice, don't talk to me, don't waste your time, that person is going to remain where he is, where she is. No forward moving. That person is going to be like animals. You know, in animals, there is no development. They grow physically, but mentally they don't grow. Spiritually, they don't grow. Same. While Allah says, humans, they grow. How do we grow? Through acts of kindness. Through acts of wholesomeness. Through acts of sacrifice, we grow. Do you listen, kids? When you give to others, when you share with others, you grow. You grow. Sometimes your mothers tell you, eat this food, eat that food. You have to grow. You have to build yourself. Good. But at the same time, the mother has to say to her kids, share this. Give this. Sympathize with that. Donate. I love those kids when sometimes I see them when there's fundraiser or something like that. They bring their savings. He's growing. Don't tell him no. One day the mother said, no, 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 no don't give your money. Why? Tell him to give his money. He's growing spiritually. He's growing. Mentally he's growing. When you give. Allah says in the Quran, لَن تَنَالُوا الْبِرْ Birr and wholesomeness and perfection. Human perfection. 
would not would never be attained حتى unless تنفقوا مما تحبون when you spend from your core money not the extra money sometimes we give extra food this is not an act of kindness or generosity maybe it's an act of giving but this is not generosity generosity is when this food you like you love it you love it and you know this food is barely enough for you but you still cut back on your desire to share it with others this is exactly what Imam Ali alayhi salam did and this is why Imam Ali is our sweetheart we love him for his acts for his human acts Imam Ali was a leader and the leader is very busy my friends when someone becomes a leader in the community, in the country, in the society, political leader, religious leader, he becomes very busy. But he would never forget even the smallest member in his community. Imam Ali during the day, busy, busy with people. During the night, busy with his Lord. After midnight, he has something special to do. Every single night, he has a special, something special. He will carry the food on his shoulder, the bag, on his own shoulder. He had servants, he had aides to help him, but he said, I enjoy this, I want to do it myself. He carries the food on his shoulder and he searches in the city, he goes. He roams in the city searching for those who are neglected. Nobody cares about them. They go hungry. He goes to their doors, he knocks at the door, and they don't recognize him. They don't see his face. It's totally dark. He gives them food. Sometimes the door is shut, he would push the food from underneath the door, put it in the house. They know nothing. Tomorrow, after his martyrdom, when they buried him, they came back from his burial site, his two children, Hassan and Hussein, and Muhammad ibn Hanafiyyah. And they saw a man sitting in a place which is a ruin. Homeless man. He was crying hard. They went to him, they said, man, what's wrong? Why do you cry? He said, I'm hungry. There was a man who used to bring me food every night. And for two nights he's missing. I don't see him. I'm hungry. I went with no food for two nights. Imam Hassan salam said to him, Ya Shaykh, Abdullahu lakal ajr. Innahu Amir al Mu'minin Ali ibn Abi Talib. That man, we just buried him today. That's leadership. Leadership is when you pay attention to the smallest details. The most neglected one in your community, you go after them. You don't wait for them to come to you. Tonight, the house of Imam Ali is dark. It's very quiet. Hassan and Hussein, they resist their tears. So their sister Zainab would not notice. They do not want to agitate their sister's pain. But Imam Ali alayhi salam is on his deathbed. And the poison, because the sword that he was struck with, that sword was poisonous. Ibn Munjam said himself, he said, I purchased this sword with 1,000 dinar and I poisoned it with another 1,000 dinar. The poison, he, he bought special poison. So when he st strikes the Imam, the Imam will die not, not because of the strike, but because of the poison. And the poison took a toll on the Imam. Imam Ali who used to stand in the mihrab every night. Tonight he could not stand. He was too weak to stand. His house was dark. And then he had to pray do his tahajjud 
while he was on his deathbed. And he realized he's leaving. Soon he's leaving his ummah, his community, his family, his life. But he was not worried about it. Because he was always praying and he always asking Allah for martyrdom. He would say, Mata yub'athu ashqaha liyukhathiba lihyati min dami rahsi. What does that man arrive to drench my beard from my, of my blood? Wallahi inna abna abi talib la yakhsha bil mawt. La anasu bil mawti min al-tifli min thadi ummir. Imam Ali, he says, I'm enchanted with death because in death there is a gift. There is something that normal people don't realize. In death, there is Allah. I meet my sweetheart. I know I'm going back to my sweetheart. Therefore, he would console his family. He would say to them, Ahla bayti la tabku. For Allah, ma fajani min al maut, waridun karihtu, wa la aridun an kartu, wa ma ana illa kabamin warad, au katalibin wajad, wa ma inda Allah khayru lil abrar. Do not be sad for me, my family. Believe me, by God, I am like someone who is thirsty in the desert. All of a sudden he arrives into a watering station, water place. He finds water in the desert. Death for me is like finding water. Aw Katalib bin Wajad, seeker who is seeking something for so many years, all of a sudden he finds it. I find peace and death because I go back to my Lord. I go back to my sweetheart. I stand before my Lord and I have reunion with my sweetheart Prophet Muhammad, with my sweetheart Fatima to Zahra. So he was giving his wasiya to his children. He started with Imam Hassan, Bunayya Hassan, Anta Nasmu Hadi Ummah. Again, they're going to pose in you. You will die with poison. Bunayya Hussein, Anta Shahidu Hadi Ummah. My son Hussein, they're going to murder you. Bunayya Zainab, Anta Al Asira, they're going to hold you captive, Ya Zainab. And then he will go unconscious because of the poison, because of the, because of the pain. And he opens his eyes, he realizes that there is a headband. Somebody wrapped him with a headband. He says, Ahla bayti man asabani. Who puts this headband around my head? Nobody answers in the first time. Nobody answers in the second time. In the third time, Hussein salam says, Abata, I did this. I did this to you. Amir al muminin said, Bunayya Hussein, Aashfaqta alayya wa fiyya jurhun wahid. Ma baluka anta man yushfaq alayk wa fiyka asharatu al jurhuh. You felt sorry for me while I have only one wound in my body. Who is going to feel sorry for you? Well, where you have multiple wounds and injuries in your body, Ya Hussein, Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. وسيعلم الذين ظلموا أي منقلب ينقلبون والعاقبة للمتقين نسألك اللهم وندعوك باسمك العظيم الأعظم العز الأجل الأكرم يا الله اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات تابع اللهم بيننا وبينهم بالخيرات إنك مجيب الدعوات من على مرضانا بالشفاء والعافية والعافية داوي جرحانا فك أسرانا أصلح بين المسلمين يا أرحم الراحمين تقبل صيامنا وصلاتنا ودعاءنا اللهم كن لوليك الحجة ابن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى آبائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك طوعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا واجعلنا اللهم من أنصاره وأعوانه وإلى أرواح المؤمنين والمؤمنات والشهداء ثواب الفاتحة مع الصلاة على محمد وآل محمد